Well, today we're out in the field and we're going to be discussing uh, the wind and how it shapes uh, the desert environment and how it reacts and interreacts with uh, the land. Uh, today we're using this particular mountain here uh, because it has a lot of contrast and it's a fairly simple structure so that we can see the reaction and see what's happening uh, very clearly. Uh, most of the time when you're looking at uh, the wind and how it reacts with mountains and, and other structures it's not going to be as evident but it is still just a very strong uh, part of the desert makes up a lot of the structures we have in the desert and a lot of how life has to react uh, whether it's plant life or animal life uh, still has to take into account uh, these principles in order to survive so let's uh, start and uh, of course we've had our classroom uh, rendition of this mountain as you may recognize. So let's take a look at some of the uh, attributes, how they look in real life and uh, go from there. Well as you can see first of all we have the uh, bow wave as I like to call it sometimes or the area where uh, we can see that the uh, debris and other light uh, particles, in this case uh, white sand, has piled up at the bottom of the mountain and that it is uh, kind of captured there as the wind tries to squeeze over the top of the mountain and then we can look at the top now this is the windward side and we can see that this high pressure area high pressure high velocity area where the wind is really moving really is having to scrape over the top of this mountain and there is little sand or debris and that is of course what we were talking about earlier and this is a good example and this uh, black lava that this little hill is made out of and the white sand show this in high contrast but of course regardless of the size of the mountain uh, this is true this particular uh, situation but it's not always as evident as it is here. So now let's take a look at the downwind side and see how that is different. Okay, we're continuing our uh, lecture here on this mountain and how it reacts with the wind. And of course, now we're on the downwind, or the leeward side, of this small mountain. A very classic example of how uh, wind and debris and sand uh, shape the desert. And the first thing we can see is that the, uh, the sand here, instead of being just at the bottom, is actually all the way up and down the entire structure of the mountain. And if we take a look and examine the pattern that this sand is uh, working on we can see that of course it's not all the same the sand is much thicker here and deeper and that changes the course of the plant community and we can see another area back over here Again, this is pertaining to the particular shape and aerodynamics, if you will, of this particular mountain. And every mountain has its own particular aerodynamics. And it matters where and how the sand and the dust and the soil and all the leaves and whatever can blow and even seed distribution affect uh, where these seeds and plants can grow 
And we can also see that it's a different plant community on this side. And of course, that's going to affect how this mountain erodes and continues to change its shape as the wind and weather and rain uh, react with it and wear it down. And so we have this beautiful example that we can learn from, but we must remember that this is a very simplified example that most mountains are far more complex. And of course we also want to remember the concept of scale, that even a small rock, if we were to go up and, and look at some of these rocks up here on the very top end of this mountain, wherever they happen to be they would have their own aerodynamics, they would affect the wind and the shape of the desert and their own small little pocket on their own scale and if this mountain were a mountain 10,000 foot tall it would also have its own reaction with the wind it would still these lessons would still be relevant and so we always want to remember that when we're dealing with uh, the wind that there is a an issue of scale and now let's uh, continue this lecture we're going to go on to the top and take a look at things uh, from that area and see what we can learn. Okay, we've made it to the top of our mountain and we're looking now at the crest of this little mountain and we can see uh, that the grease woods are here and that they're quite small and in many cases you can actually see the uh, wind has shaped and sloped them a little bit, angled them a little bit to the prevailing wind and this is not uncommon uh, for many plants to get that wind driven look but one of the things we want to understand about the wind while it can matter a lot right at where right where the wind is hitting the mountain sometimes if we look there can be a distance effect and we'll look at that now we'll just pan on over here and if you look at the flow lines on some of these bushes, you see here, there's very little. Of course, this is that bow wake where the wind is hitting the mountain and coming uh, to a stop almost. Or of course, it's not a stop, but it's, it's having to change directions, go upward, uh, slow down, and it's dropping uh, debris, the sand in this case. And if we move a little further over, we can see that now the plants are starting to get a little bit of a line on them where you can kind of actually see the direction of the wind flow or the air flow if you're kind of getting an idea for the aerodynamics that's uh, going on here and as we get along to the side of course it gets the angle changes and that angle gets further and further to the point where now it's quite obvious that it's these lines are obvious in the direction of the prevailing wind and we have however if we look there's a gap in the vegetation this gap is where wind is really moving pretty fast so fast that it's pretty much scoured everything out of it and then as it gets further away from the mountain we begin to see sand and dust debris collecting again again it's in the direction of the prevailing wind but the point we want to understand here is that this area right in here is typical in so much as that uh, sometimes you can be 50 or 100 yards 
away from a particular mountain or a structure or a valley and it's still affecting the wind in that area. Now again this is a very simple structure with a simple aerodynamics, simple reaction to the wind and when you get into the more complex mountains um, you get of course a much more complex reaction to the uh, wind. It can be often very difficult to to figure it out but once you understand to look at the ground around you it becomes a little more obvious with some practice. So let's take a look at some uh, the local situation right here on this mountain again. Okay here we have uh, this truly rocky uh, situation very stony and of course this is the high velocity area that we were talking about and now we're moving across to the top and then we'll start down the other side as soon as we get started you can see only inches off the top inches as far as elevation we begin to get some sandy areas And this sand, of course, is reacting. It's here because the wind is now broken up and doesn't have the same uniform direction or velocity that it did on the other side. And you can see here suddenly we're in a completely different environment. And, of course, with the completely different environment, as far as the wind, we also get a completely different situation with the plants. And as you can see, we have a lot of uh, annual plants here that have been able to grow in this sandy soil. And, of course, any time you get a sandy... I should say a different soil, you're going to tend to get a different plant community. And so this uh, kind of ends this class. I hope you enjoyed it. And it's something that you can take out into the field and learn uh, perhaps a piece of ground or a mountain range or a valley that's near and dear to yourself that you'll be able to see in a new light and continue learning the way of things. And with that, I thank you.